and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to learn about NumPy, and this is the first library that we will see. Now let's quickly switch to the code window. So NumPy, as we have already discussed, is a very fundamental package when you want to do scientific computing in Python. It provides a bunch of features. Some of the useful ones are it provides an n-dimensional array object, which is really efficient. Provides the operation of broadcasting. It lets you do linear algebra, Fourier transform, random number capabilities, and much more. So we already know how to install a library in Python using the Python package index. So I'm not going to cover that in this video. But suppose you want to check whether your system has a package installed or not. The first thing that you can do is you can literally try to import the package. If it works, that means the system has the package installed. If it does not, or if it gives you an error, that means you need to install that package. So in this case, I run import numpy as np and I'm not getting any error that means this package is installed on my system now this way of importing by using as and giving an alias is actually very useful when you're working with a lot of libraries in python suppose you have to use numpy again and again all over your program right so it would be difficult to write the entire name numpy again and again and there are even packages that have names longer than this so using this as keyword you can give a alias to any library that you import in python so wherever you need to write numpy you can just write np and you can call the functions using np dot this straightforward so now that we know that numpy is installed let's first of all check the version of numpy on our system so we have 1.17.1 .1 installed make sure that you also have the same version so that there is no issues in the api of the library we'll give the command to install this version right below the video so first of all as we have seen again and again that numpy gives you an undimensional array object so how can you create an array you can just do np.array function pass the list and if you run this you'll get an array now you might be wondering that this data structure looks very similar to a list then what is the difference so this is a list let me just create it and i'll just try to create a similar array so I'll just copy this and I'll say np dot array now do you see any difference between the data types of elements in this list and in this array so in this list we had numbers 1 4 5 we had a character alphanumeric character 2 and we had a boolean false so finally when we created the list all of the data types retained the original data type but in an array what happened was all of the data types were converted to string so basically one of the major differences between a list and an array is an array has this limit that you can only have elements of the same data type if you have elements of different data type it will just try to convert them to the same data type so this is the first major difference between a list and an array this is what we are showing here also it basically uses type casting and upcasts every other data type to string type now there is another major difference so let's see that you have this list sample list let's just print it so this is the list now what will happen if you multiply the entire list by 2 let's see so it has basically duplicated the list and there are the entire list is once again appended to the original list so 1 2 6 1 2 6 if we say do it by 3 it will do the same thing 3 times and so on you get the idea now we'll create an array so this is my sample numpy array in fact i'll just remove the print statement so, so that you can see the array in its raw form so this is the array now what will happen if I do the same multiply by 2 here? So do you see any difference between what happened here and what happened here? Basically, here the entire list or array is not duplicated. It's actually the number 2 has been multiplied to every individual element of the array. So this was the array 1, 2, 6 and the final array becomes 2 to 12. If you do 3, it will do the same thing. So this is another major difference between a list and an array. An array has a concept which is known as broadcasting. What broadcasting essentially does is you do any operation on the array, that operation will get implemented on each element of that array. So instead of into 3, you can just say plus 3. 
so this is the number one two three four five six and each number has been added with three you can divide by three and you get the idea so these are the two major differences between a list and an array and in the upcoming videos of the course you'll actually understand why this concept of broadcasting is very useful for data science the next thing that we are going to talk about is how to create a matrix in numpy so as you know numpy is very good for linear algebra so the fundamental instruments of linear algebra is matrix so you can create a matrix in numpy first of all i have created this multi dimensional list a right and if you want to create a matrix of this list you can just say np dot array and pass the list and you get the matrix which is nothing other than just a multi dimensional array now you can access elements of this matrix just like you would have done for a real matrix suppose you want to access this number so this number is row 0 so row 0 and column 1 so you get 2 if you do column 2 then you will get 3 and you can do it again and again Now instead of explicitly creating a list and passing it to an array function, you can directly pass the structure in the array function itself in order to create a matrix. So both of these matrix are same. You can also create a matrix that is filled up of random integers using np dot random dot random function. So zero to ten is actually the range in which you want the random numbers to be, and three comma three is the shape of the matrix. so if i just increase the range to say 100 you will see that the numbers are two digit now let me do this back so notice that even though i'm running the same code with all the same parameters both the times we are getting matrices with different random values and that's what the random number generating capabilities of numpy is right but sometimes in real life you need to be able to predict what kind of random numbers will be there in the matrix so there is a way to fix this and that is known as seed so suppose i have given the seed 0 now if i call this function i'll get a bunch of numbers and if i call this function again with the same seed i'll still get the same bunch of numbers so seed lets you fix the behavior of a random generator now because seed is 0 any time any time you run this cell you will see that you will get the same matrix and the minute you remove the seed or change it to some other value it becomes random so seed is a way of making sure that no matter how many times you call the random function will get the same numbers and if you don't give the seed then you will have the original behavior which is every time you call the function you will have a matrix of random numbers next thing in numpy is you can actually create an entire matrix that is filled with nothing but zeros so this is the shape that you give 3 comma 4 zeros is the function and you can give the type so i have this matrix another matrix 4 by 5 similar to zero you can also create a matrix filled with ones so you can use the ones function give the shape of the matrix and you get the matrices you also can create an identity matrix so because identity matrix is a square matrix you have to give only one number and i have given 5 so it will create a 5 by 5 identity matrix you can change this value to 3 and you will get a 3 by 3 identity matrix suppose you want to create a matrix that is filled with a specific number so this is the shape you want to fill it with 3.14 and you can use the np dot full function and you get this matrix similarly this time we have filled the matrix with 7 the next concept that comes to mind is when you want to concatenate or combine two arrays or two matrices so this is the matrix 1 and this is the matrix 2 and first what we want to do is we want to combine them row wise so after 4 5 6 i want 7 8 9 here then 10 11 12 here so you can do that using np dot concatenate you can pass both the matrices as a list and you have to give access equal to 0 so whenever you give access is equal to 0 you are telling numpy to do a row wise operation see these two matrices it combined in a row wise fashion suppose you want to do the same thing column wise then the same code you can use same concatenate function same way of passing the matrices but access should be 1 so whenever you give access equal to 1 you tell numpy to do a column wise operation so let's see what happens So this is a first one two three four five six. And after that, we have added values in column fashion. So seven eight nine ten eleven twelve. So this was basics of NumPy, a very useful library in Python, and we will explore it as and when needed in the course. Let me show you the documentation of NumPy. So come to this page. There are a lot of useful things like tutorial, basics, so on. You can click on NumPy reference. So these are the functions and possibilities that you can do with that you can do with NumPy. feel free to explore them and see 
what are the things that you can directly use in your work so there are things like discrete Fourier transform and so on Thank you.